Hey, everybody, welcome to AP Daily Practice video number six for AP Computer Science A. My name is Rob Schultz. I teach at Bellbrook High School in Bellbrook, Ohio. And I'm Tim Gallagher, and I teach at Winter Springs High School located just outside of beautiful Orlando, Florida. And welcome back. We are going to do yet another free response question for the uh, Computer Science A exam. And just to recap, you know that we have a method and control structures question for number one. Number two is always going to be a class implementation question. Three is an array array list, and four is a 2D array. Today, as we mentioned on the last video, we're going to do another array array list question. And if you would like to follow along and have your own copy of the question, go ahead and click on the link associated with this video so you can download your own copy. You can follow along, write your code, try it out as well, and give it your best shot as we go through it as well. All right, so here we go. Uh, this question is the question number three uh, from last year's free response questions, 2022. And this is called the review analysis question. So uh, the story behind this one is that users of a website are asked to provide a review of the website at the end of each visit. Uh, each review is gonna be represented by an object of this review class. And we see the, the class review. It consists of an integer in indicating uh, the user's rating of the website and an optional string comment field. Now the comment field is going to either end with a period or an exclamation point or a letter, or it is a string of length zero. We'll get more into that a little bit later. Uh, but for right now, we know that these are the two variables that I just mentioned. We're going to have an integer for our rating and a string for our comment. In this class here, we can see that there's a constructor. We're initializing our instance variables. And there's two important methods that we're going to use for the review class. There's a get rating method, which returns the integer value of the rating and a get comment method, which returns the string value that represents the comment. Of course, there could be other instance variables constructed not shown, but those are the two methods that we really care about, the get rating and the get comment method. So the review analysis class is what we're gonna look at next. And this contains methods used to analyze reviews provided by the users. We're gonna write two methods of the review analysis class. So remember, when approaching a free response question, once you get to the class where you're gonna be writing some methods, Really important thing to do here is identify our instance variables. And in this case, we've got an array of the aforementioned review objects called all reviews. So remember, it's all reviews. It's not review analysis, it's not reviews. Make sure you use the name all reviews in your solution. So put a big star next to that, circle that note. That's my instance variable that I'm gonna be using. There's a constructor here, so we know we can construct objects. But the two methods that we're going to be concerned with is the get average rating, which returns a double. That's what we're going to do in part A. And then there's also the collect comments method, which returns an array list of strings. And that's what Rob's going to be going over for us in part B. So let's go ahead and focus on part A first, the get average rating. So part A says we're going to write the review analysis method, get average rating, which returns the average rating, also the called the arithmetic mean of all the elements of the reviews. So for example, if get, uh, we have this get average rating method and we have, if you look at the example, we have uh, four different reviews and you'll notice they each contain a review, a rating and a string. So these ratings right here, I'm gonna circle these, the number four, the three, the five, the two and the three, we wanna get the average rating. So how do we calculate the average? Well, we're gonna add them all together and all those numbers together equals 17. And there's five of those numbers. So we're going to divide 17 divided by five is 3.4. Now, you might look at that and say, wait a minute, those are integers. And you're right, that's going to have to come into play. We know that we're going to want to return a double get average rating. So we're going to have to account for that when we actually do the code writing here. But just to show the example numerically or mathematically, that's what's going to be happening. So in this example, as it says, get average rating will return 3.4 if all reviews contain these review objects. So Let's go ahead and try writing the code for this. Given the instance variable that you circled already and knowing the methods that are associated with the review class, can you write this get average rating method, which returns a double that represents the average of all the reviews? Go ahead and hit pause, give it your best shot, and we'll come back and look at the solution in a moment. Okay, here we go. So let's look at the code for this. So again, this is a canonical solution. We've been looking at a lot of canonical solutions. This is a solution, not the only correct solution, but this is a really good one. And I wanna uh, talk about why I like the way this particular solution is written here. So you'll notice that we have a sum variable and then you'll notice a for each loop or um, a loop that has uh, where it says for every 
review R within all reviews. Now, remember, we said that all reviews, that's an array. Well, whether it's an array or an array list, this for each loop is going to look the same. So when we're traversing through elements, just getting values or, or looking at the elements of an array or an array list and not changing any of them, uh, a for each loop or an enhanced for loop, as it's called as well, is really nice to use because you're guaranteed to access all the elements of the data structure here that we're using, in this case, all reviews. So let's look at how this would be scored. So I've got initialize and accumulate my sum. So I've got my sum equals zero. Notice as I go through within my for each loop, I've got the uh, sum plus equals something. I'm adding something to my sum each time, right? That's how I accumulate my sum. We also notice that we access every element of all reviews, no bounds errors. Well, because I did a for each loop here, I'm not gonna have a bounds error. It's gonna access every element within the all reviews array. And then finally, the last, the algorithm point here, computes and returns the double average rating based on get rating return values. So notice what happens here. I use the r.get rating. So I called the method from the review class, added all those values to sum. And then in my return statement, now maybe you did a local variable to do the math or whatever, but here in my return statement, I know I need to return a double. So notice I cast sum as a double first and then divided by all reviews dot length, which is the amount of elements in my data structure, all reviews. You could have done it a different way. Maybe you initialize sum to be a double and then you didn't have to worry about casting. So there's other complete correct solutions as well. How'd you do in part A? Great. Rob, I'm gonna turn it over to you. You can take us through part B. Hey, thanks, Tim. That was great. Okay, let's take a look at part B. So part B tells us, write a method for the review analysis class called collect comments. And what this is going to do is it's going to collect, uh, collect and format only the comments that contain exclamation points. We want the comments that people either felt were really, really good to the point of throwing in an exclamation point or really, really bad throwing in an exclamation point. Okay, the method returns an array list of string objects containing copies of those user comments that contain an exclamation point, but they're going to be formatted a certain way. So first off, um, we want to make sure that the index is immediately followed by a hyphen. So as we pull the comment, we're going to include the index position that that comment came from. We're going to follow it with a hyphen. We're going to put a copy of the original comment. And then we want to make sure that the string that we're concatenating all of, all of these together, uh, we have to end with either a period or an exclamation point. And if the original comment from all reviews doesn't end in either a period or an exclamation point, we have to add a period because we want all of them to be uniform. Okay, so let's take a look at an example. Let's go back to the, the slide that had our five reviews. Um, notice that we've got several here. We've got zero, index position zero that includes an exclamation point. We've got index position two that includes an exclamation point. And we've got index position three that includes an exclamation point. So what I would end up doing is I would end up pulling the comments from those index positions adding the index position in front of the comment with a hyphen separating them. And then notice right here, our very first one has good exclamation point and abbreviation for thanks, THX, but there's no exclamation point or period. So we have to make sure we add that period at the end of that comment before we add it to the array list. This is the array list that's gonna be returned. And it says, um, Let's see, the reviews at index position one and four are not included because notice they don't have an exclamation point, okay? So that's our task. That's what we're looking for with part B. So here's where we complete the method. And again, look at preconditions. All reviews contains at least one review. Um, we have our post condition. We need to make sure all reviews is unchanged. We don't want to change anything in all reviews. So this is where we want to go ahead and pause. Again, take some time, but be aware of your time because we want to start practicing with the time, the time frame that we've got and see if you can come up with a good solution to the collect comments method. Okay, go ahead and pause. Okay, welcome back. All right, so let's take a look at a solution. This is the canonical solution again with the points listed down the side or at least the first three of six points. And again, this is a little more lengthy solution. So we're going to add it kind of on its own separate slide here. So the very first point, um, do we instantiate an array list capable of holding string objects? Well, we do. That's one of the very first things we do. In fact, it's the first thing we do in our array, uh, or I'm sorry, in our method. We create an array list of string objects called comment list, and it's a new array list of string objects. Okay. Um, the second point of this half of, of part B, it, 
<clears throat> pardon me, is do we access every element of all reviews with no bounds errors? Okay, we do. We have a for loop that goes through all reviews.length, um, and we pull every element as we work our way through accessing all reviews from our array. Um, and no, no bounds there is present. So it looks like we're good to go with that one. Okay, now let's look at point number six. Point number six says a lot of different things. There's a lot involved with this one. It says we call get comment on an element of all reviews, which we do, but it also says we have to call at least one string method appropriately on the get comment return value. And if you notice, we do several. We do, um, let's see. So here's where we call get comment on all reviews. We call our string methods, uh, we call substring, we call comment.length, um, we end up calling comment.index of. So in this case, we do more than one. We need at least one. And in this case, we did three. It also says that all of the string method calls are syntactically valid. And in this case, all of them are 100% correct. So we end up getting point six. okay? Let's take a look at the last three points. Point seven, do we compare the final character of the comment to both a period and an exclamation point? We do. Um, notice here we've got string last is going to give us this. Uh, we have string last equals comment dot substring comment dot length minus one. That's going to grab our last character and store it to this string variable last. And then we're checking to see if last dot equals exclamation point, or in this case, if it doesn't. And we're also checking to make sure that last dot equals does not equal period, or at least we're checking for that. So we've got our check to make sure that we're comparing for both a period and an exclamation point. Number eight, do we assemble the string appropriately based on the result of the comparison of the last character with a period and exclamation point? So again, there's a lot going on with that one. So based on the result of this if statement and our comparison with exclamation point and period, we're adding a period to the end if neither of if the last character doesn't equal either an exclamation point or a period. But then we're going on beyond that and we're constructing the string appropriately down below with I. Uh, let's see, concatenated with a hyphen, concatenated with our comment, which now should include a period if it didn't before. A lot of stuff. All right. And then point nine, do we add all and only appropriate constructed strings to the array list? And again, this is our algorithm point. So this is where we're checking to make sure that once we add something or once we, once we collect our correct comment, we're making sure that we add it to our comment list, which is our array list that's going to be returned. Notice that's the last point. Um, we still want to make sure we return in our code, but for this specific rubric, the return is not assessed, okay? All right, how'd you do? That was a lot to digest for just one part. It was six full points. Um, so hopefully everybody did okay with that one, all right? Thank you for joining us. If you're interested in more free response questions, make sure you go out and take a look um, on AP, uh, AP Central, and you can pull more free response questions down from there. For some other resources, and uh, Tim mentioned this in our last video, make sure you go out on YouTube or in AP Classroom and check out the videos from last year's 2022 AP Live Review Sessions, because there's a lot of good information in there too. All right, we hope to see you there, and we hope to see you back here with our next video. Everybody have a great day.